it's my the graph was left okay so today we will draw the graph it's very simple okay so quickly you people will draw the graph you have to take income and your savings okay and similar graph so here this will be your income and this will be your saving is this will be your income and this will be your saving so here you can see for zero it is minus 50 so for zero it is here minus 50 and then for 50 it is minus 25 so it will go like this and this is how you will draw your saving clear yes ma'am okay Heba, clear okay Heba, join from two devices Okay. 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 You can draw the graph quickly. Then we have to do a lot of things. So today you people will be very quick. Okay.
Okay, Mama Diane, you are also done? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now we are going to write few things about MPS. Okay, so what are the properties of MPS? First thing is MPS varies between 0 and 1. So you can see your MPS is between 0 and 1, right? It is not 0, not even 1, right? It is between 0 and 1, right? So now the question is, ma'am, uh, when our MPS will be 0 or when our MPS will be 1? So MPS is basically savings. So when your MPS will be 0, when your save change in savings are 0, right? When MPS means addition. So when you are going to use your entire additional income in consumption, right? So at that moment, your savings are zero because you are using your addition income and consumption. That means your savings are zero. So automatically your MPS will become zero. And now when your MPS will be one, when you are going to use your entire additional income for savings, you are not consuming anything. Now you are using your additional income for savings. So at that moment, your MPS will be one. Now this thing, MPS cannot be greater than one because change in income, change in savings cannot be greater than change in income. So over here you have seen that your MPS is not, great, not greater than one, right? So why? Because of course change in savings cannot be more than income, right? You when you when your for example your income increase, so of course that will not. For example, you have ten income. Out of that income only you will save. Now your income, your savings cannot. If you are earning ten rupees, your savings cannot be twenty rupees, right? So your savings cannot be greater than Y. That's why your MPS can never be greater than Y. Clear? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So yes. you'll just write it down. Good evening, Miriam. No problem, Miriam. We can write it down. Like we discuss only two things. One, the map. Oh, sorry, not map. Graph, which you can draw. Just leave the space. You just have to draw the graph, taking income and savings. Okay. And after that, we discuss the properties of MPS. So MPS is basically, it varies between 0 to 1. Okay. And the next thing is your MPS. Uh, you can see over here, your MPS is between 0 to 1. Right. 
and next your mps varies between 0 to 1 and see your mps can be 0 and can be 1 so when you are using your additional income for consumption at that moment your mps will be uh, 0 but if you are using your additional income for savings at that moment your mps will be and remember one thing, your MPS cannot be greater than one because see, why cannot be, because whatever your income is, your savings cannot be more than that, right? So change in savings cannot be more than your change in income. That's why your MPS can never be more than one, okay? So if you want to take the screenshot for this, you can, because I think uh, Mohamed Ayan, you are also done, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Mariam, you can take the screenshot for this. Okay, and just leave one page so that you can draw the graph as well as this. Okay, uh, just take the screenshot and let me know once you're done. Okay, now we are going to do the difference between APS and MPS. So today you people will be very, very quick because we have to start new concept as well. So ma'am, what is APS and MPS? Now there's a difference between APS and MPS, okay? Wait, so first APS is the ratio of total savings to the corresponding total income of the economy at a point of time. But MPS is the ratio of change in savings to the change in income of an economy during a period of time. The formula is this and MPS the formula is this. Then APS is represented at a point of time on saving curves and MPS is measured at a, at a point on saving curve with respect to the previous point, right? For MPS, you need the previous point itself. Then only you can find the change. And once you got the change, then only you can find this MPS, okay? Remember one thing, APS can be negative when there are the savings at zero level of income or when your consumption are more than your income at that moment your APS can be negative but MPS can never be negative as a change in consumption can never be more than in change in income okay so over here when you compare the things you can see APS can be negative when it is negative when your income is zero or when your consumption is more than your income but over MPS you can see your MPS is never negative so you will write MPS can never be negative
students and yes no okay mom they are done he bad done डन मैम हेबा यू आर आल्सो डन ओके आई जस्ट वेट फॉर वन मोर मिनट देन आई विल स्क्रॉल इट डाउन Okay, I think Hiba is also done. She is facing some network issues. Okay, now students, we are going to do some numericals. Okay, clear? Yes, ma'am. So giving you questions. So first thing is that over here, this is the first formula of yours. Okay, so ma'am, what is this formula? See, you can see it is A P C plus A P S equals to one. Okay, now the question is, ma'am, how come A P S, A P C, and A P S, like when you will add them, it will be equals to one? Okay, so it is basically, you know, what is the formula for A P C? It is C divided by y, yes, and for A P S, it is S divided by y. So when you will add C B divided by y plus S divided by, it will be like y will be same, right? And after that, it will be C plus S, right? And you know. Your income is equals to C plus S, right? Because you are going to use your income either on consumption or on savings, right? So that is going to be equals to your income. So instead of writing C plus S, you can write Y. Yes. So you wrote here Y divided by Y. So you got one. So that's why you can say that A P C plus A P S equals to one. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, next formula is this: A P, uh, sorry, M P C plus M P S equals to one. You know the formula of M P C? It is delta C divided by delta Y, and M P S it is delta S divided by delta Y. So when you will add both delta C divided by delta Y plus delta C delta S divided by delta Y, you'll get this. And change in consumption plus change in savings again, it is equals to change in income. Right. Earlier it was C plus S equals to income, but here it is delta C plus delta S equals to income. Right. So it is delta income, delta income, change in income, and divided by change in income, you got one. So yes, you can say that yes, ma'am, M P C plus M P S will also give you one. Clear? Yes. No. No. You want me to explain it again? Yes, ma'am. Can you explain it again? Okay. You know the formula of M P C, right? It is delta C divided by delta Y. Yes. yes. No. Yes. And for M P S, it is delta S divided by delta Y, right? So earlier, yes. what we did, we did uh, C plus S equals to income, right? Because your income either you will consume it or you will save it, right? For example, my income is ten. 
So five I will consume and five I will save. Or if my income is ten, eight I am consume eight twenty and twelve I am saving. Or twelve I am consuming eight I am saving like this. Okay, in total you will make income, right? So now if it is delta y, so here it will be delta c plus delta s, right? So you know delta c upon delta y and delta s upon delta y. So now you are going to add them. Like MPC plus MPS, so MPC is delta C upon delta Y, and MPS is delta S upon delta Y. When you will add it, you will take the LCM. LCM will be delta Y, and upper will be delta C plus delta S. Now this delta C and delta S is equals to delta Y. So you wrote here delta Y, and delta uh, denominator you already had delta Y. So when you will cut it, you will get Y. Clear? Now it is clear. No. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Maria and Heba, clear. Okay. So first of all, what you will do, you will do, you will write this uh, formula. I'll just tell you how you're going to do it. Okay. So you're going to write first APC plus this. Okay, and after that you will write how. So this is how. Do it and then I'll do it for MPS as well. Done, students. Today you have to be very, very quick because we have to cover a lot of things. Yes, ma'am. Done. Okay, Maria, and Mom, they are. Done, ma'am. Mariam, you are also done? Maya, am I audible? You are done? I think maybe some network issues. Okay, I'll just scroll it down. 
Okay. Now you will write this second MP C plus M P S equals to one and this. Okay. I remember one thing. Just make it a box over here, here, and just write it like this. C plus S equals to Y. Okay. Just write it. Right. And here you will also make a box and you will write here delta C plus delta S equals to delta Y. Just write it down. Delta C plus delta Y equals to sorry. Delta C plus delta S equals to Y. That is income. And here after this second, and then write how. And once you are done with this, then write make this box and write here. Okay. Done. Okay, everyone is done. Okay, Mariam is done. Okay, Mama, then once you are done, let me know. Okay.
Mohammed Dayan done? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now we are going to start with the next topic, which is your investment, right? We already did saving, right? We already did consumption, right? Now it's time for the third one, which is your investment, right? So, ma'am, first thing is that, ma'am, what is investment? right so investment refers to the expenditure incurred incurred means done okay incurred on the creation of new capital asset asset you already know the product okay for example so for example you have this lab okay now you added computers over here right so this is basically you already had something but now you added something right so that is creation of new capital assets okay but for example you had this land and over here, you constructed a building, right? So this is basically our investment, right? So investment refers to the expenditure. Of course, investment is also expenditure. If you are constructing a house or a building, there also you need money, right? If you are purchasing the computers, there also you need to spend money. So investment refers to expenditure incurred on the creation of new capital asset. New capital means uh, something new you are creating. For example, expenditure incurred means done on purchase of machine. You bought machines. Computer is a type of machine. You constructed a building or you bought a building or any equipment like vehicles and all that. So that is basically your, that is your investment. Clear? Clear? Students? No? Others? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, now, there are two types of investment. One is induced investment and other one is autonomous investment. We discussed this as well, like prior also. Induced means that it is being influenced by others, right? For example, because of income, it is changing. But autonomous means it is automatic. It is not getting affected by the income or anything, right? So that is autonomous. So we have two types of investment. One is induced and one is your autonomous investment. Clear? So you will be very quick in writing because we have to cover a good portion today. So, first of all, you will write investment function and after that you will write this and here you will mark it. You will underline this. Like this, investment refers to the expenditure. Okay. Okay.
करना है ओके एवरीवन इज डन यस मैम मरियम यू आर आल्सो डन ओके सो नाउ विल बी डूइंग फर्स्ट थिंग व्हाट इज इंड्यूस इन्वेस्टमेंट okay so ma'am what is induced investment induced investment is that investment which is directly influenced by the level of income that is increase uh, okay that is it is increased okay it is increased with you will write here increase in income okay and it falls with the fall in income these are made for profit motive so basically for example your income is increasing 10 20 30 so that means your induced investment will also increase if it is a 5 10 15 okay but for example your income is falling 10 5 2 then your induced income will also fall 2 1 like this okay so induced investment is that investment which is directly influenced by the level of income that is i dot e it is increased with increase in income and falls with fall in income and whenever this why this investment are done this investment are done with the profit motive see here your income is increasing that why that's why you are increasing the investment right because you have to earn profit but here you don't have anything your income is decreasing so when your income is decreasing you will not get profit so that that moment you will decrease your investment as well clear so could yes, you write it down induced investment
No. Okay, Heba. Others done? Heba, you can leave. Okay, ma'am. Bye-bye, Heba. Take care. Thank you, ma'am.